So he he got his first job at um, after he finished school last year, yep. um, working in hospitality and at the Marriott here on the Gold Coast. Huh. And he just worked and worked and put money away. And then when an opportunity came up with Positive, he yes. turned around to me because he's been watching, you know, the PIRs and everything and watching yep. mentoring. And um, he goes, I want to get one. And he put enough away um, huh. for a good part deposit. of the deposit. We did, yeah. we did give him some, yeah. um, you know, uh, a little bit of help, uh, but he had most of it. And so he put a deposit down on a four bedroom townhouse um, in Pimpamar as his first home. Wow. And yeah. So that's off the plan and it's ready in December of next year. Um, so he is now madly saving um, because he's looking at obviously getting a mortgage at the end of next year. You're listening to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard. Here's your host, Tabitha Bright. Hello and welcome to Property Investor Tales, stories from the front yard, where I get to speak to property investors from around Australia about their investing journey. My name is Tabitha Bright and I'm the head of coaching here at Property Real Estate, where we get to help people build wealth through property. With over 8,000 clients across Australia and New Zealand, there are some incredible stories to tell, which hopefully make your journey a little bit easier and will inspire you along the way. My guest today is Diane Monk, and we discuss with her her recent purchase, which has created over 100k in equity in 18 months, and how her son Liam has started investing in property at 18 years old, and what that looks like. So enjoy this conversation with Dean. Hey folks, welcome to today's podcast. Now, um, I have with me the fabulous Diane, and uh, Diane has been part of the PRE community as an invaluable member. I wouldn't even begin to tell you what her role involves. I'll get her to explain that in a moment. Um, but uh, she's been part of Positive Real Estate for going on eight years. And I wanted to interview Diane today um, because one of the things about Positive Real Estate and its mentoring program is as adult participants in the Lifetime program, uh, your children, as they grow older and become adults, uh, get, part, get, um, get to be part of the mentoring community. Your adult children are automatically part of mentoring. Uh, and D, as a team member of Positive Real Estate, automatically gets uh, mentoring as part of our community. And uh, her adult children are now beginning to invest. So I wanted to talk about that today uh, as part of um, the podcast series for all of those with all of those of you that have older children. Uh, now, first of all, welcome Diane to the podcast. It is awesome to have you here. Thanks, Tab. Thank you for having me. <laughs> do you want to just fill the guys in briefly on what it is you do at Positive Real Estate? Because it's a very varied and incredibly important role. It is. Well, my primary role is as EA to Group CEO, Jason Witten. Yes. So I look after Jason and Shay yes. um, as a unit and then also Sam Saggers. So looking after all of the directors of Positive, uh, it's, you know, a big role in itself. Yes. And then I look after the board governance uh, for all of the entities that they uh, ha own. Yes. And in addition to that, I manage our offshore team. Uh, so we've got 30 plus team members in Manila uh, and I manage those. We, you know, we grew that from four um, to just on 33 at the moment. Yeah. And I know you're a much loved member of the PRE community. I know a lot of the team um, often come to you. You've um, along with Shay, who's definitely Mama Bear. You're you're up there as Mama Mama <laughs> Mama Bear number two, the yeah. work wife of uh, of Jason Witten. Um, and so uh, you know, it's it's awesome to have you here. So thank you so much. Um, I know myself and many of the team. You know, when we've had those moments that are a bit rough, we we come to confide in D. D is um, definitely uh, a a very important part of the team. Um, and so tell me, uh, you recently have purchased a property yourself, you and your husband, Gary. Uh, you've purchased a property in your self-managed super. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah that's correct. We've recently purchased um, off the plan um, ah. in Arana Hills. 
Ah, and that was so a townhouse, the, wasn't it? Yeah, four-bedroom townhouse. Wow. So that's coming up for completion uh, in the first quarter of next year. Um, yeah. So that's exciting. And um, so that's, you know, a great asset to have, um, especially, you know, as we head towards the end of our working careers um, that yeah. we've got in our SMS there. Not that I'm going anywhere fast, but, you know. <laughs> I was going to say, no, 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 no. no, no you, know, you, know what, you know what I mean, though. You know, <laughs> I do. Um, so yeah, so that's that's exciting, and um, you know, to be able to have that ability to get something uh, that we can uh, keep as an asset is awesome. Oh, um, fantastic! And um, and I know um, many clients are interested in the SMSF space, self managed super space, uh, and so there's a couple of things that I have to pre-frame here. One, um, positive real estate is not giving your clients any financial advice. Um, Diane and her husband have gone to see a financial planner to make sure that that strategy is right for them. Um, they go to an accountant to double check um, that they're comfortable with what buying in a self-managed super involves. They get all the numbers done. They understand their strategy inside super and they understand the importance of running a compliance super and what that looks like um, because the ATO have some very strict guidelines about um, a compliant super fund um, and what you need to do. So, you know, it is not something to be taken lightly, but if it suits your circumstances and you've had all the right advice and you've set it up correctly, uh, it can be a fantastic strategy um, to really support uh, retirement. Um, D, you know, you have a low LVR, so a low loan to value ratio. So you might have to put in 30, 40% of the purchase price um, and we're looking to have a strategy where that property gets paid off as quickly as possible which is what you and Gary are doing so uh, you and ID I hope you don't mind me sharing we're both in our 50s um, yep. I myself have a property in my super and my strategy like D's is to get that paid down as quickly as possible um, so I'm no longer you know having to pay off a mortgage how can I use my PAYG income effectively to maximize um, my, um, uh, my taxes? And so I contribute my maximum into super to get that debt paid down um, as quickly as possible. And the end goal, uh, D, I think you'll have a similar goal to me, is to have a debt-free property inside super. You have that yeah. fantastic rental income. And you've got an asset, um, you know, that should you decide to, you could sell um, and have that inside your super to support retirement as well. Is that kind of where you're going with yours? Exactly. And, we're, you know, we've been making extra contributions, um, you, know, well, you know, for the last 18 months yep. and making sure that we also put in the maximum that we can. Fantastic. Um, and when you've got those lower LVRs, when you've got less debt compared to the value of the property, then your cash flow is better as well. Yeah. Yeah. And there's and, a and the property has gone up in value even before we've settled it, which is Who's awesome. that? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Are you comfortable to share roughly what you think that property's gone up? It's by? roughly gone up about 100K. Wow. Yeah. In two years, three years? In 18 months. In 18 months, that property's gone up 100K. What a fantastic return potentially for your um, for your portfolio. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and so off the plan done well, understanding the strategy, and I will highlight buying a class property. Like if your super balance only supports you buying, you know, something pretty pretty low value, my humble opinion, and it's only an opinion, I'm not qualified to talk about super, I'm not licensed to talk about super, but what we see for our clients is be very careful buying low-grade property. Um, you have to buy an A-class asset inside your super. Um, you'll get the maximum cash flow uh, and, um, and the maximum um, capital growth over the long term. Uh, it's not worth um, buying something that uh, is not a quality property inside your super. You really want that A-class asset. And then you reap the benefits like D has <laughs> of, um, of that capital growth. 
and D, your yield when you finish will, you know, will support um, any lending that you have in super. Because there's one thing, I mean, as much as there's upside with doing all of this, there's also your flip side that you have to understand in super. So interest rates are higher. Um, it's a little bit more of a convoluted process to get a loan inside super. Um, you may have to even pay for a broker to write you a loan inside super because they do involve so much more work. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of hoops to jump through. Um, you would have known that. Um, is there anything 100%. you want to share on that journey? <laughs> um, so we, you know, before we did it, we got the advice from a financial planner, yeah. made sure everything ticked all the boxes. We also spoke to a broker, yes. made sure what we had to do to have it ready to go. And we've continued that communication with the broker. Uh, so we know that um, when it comes to the time where all everything's ducks in a row done, so it's nice and simple and yeah. making sure that all of the audits are done on the, you know, annual audits are done. All of that is done. That's um, a fully so compliant. With the ATO yeah. and ready to go for loans. <laughs> awesome. And when you go to do your loan, because I know that you've um, seen other people go through the process of doing an SMSF loan, um, you know, there's a, an absolute, I think I can speak frankly, folk today and say it's a, there's a shit ton of paperwork. A hundred percent. You've got to get, you know, multiple people to sign off on it. And, and you know, it's not a, it's not a straightforward process, but I will, um, I will clarify if it is a, is a strategy that works for you based on your discussions with your accountant and your financial planner, it's a fantastic strategy to make sure that you have great security inside uh, super for retirement. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. And so let's talk a little bit about Liam. Liam is your son. How old is Liam? Uh, he is 18 and a half. 18. Oh my God. I remember. So yeah, it would have been 10. And when you first started working at Positive Real Estate. He was short then too. <laughs> and now he's what? You have to fill in the story. Six foot five. Six foot, six foot five. Yeah. And he's a basketball player, isn't yeah. he? He's looked yeah. at um, doing some stuff in the US. and He did and then COVID sort of squashed that for him. Oh. Um, but now he's going down another pathway. Um, but keeping that up as a, you know, social activity. Yeah, so um, so obviously a talented basketball player. He, um, <clears throat> and I'm linking this because often, often not always what we see with people that understand a high functioning athletic career is they may have um, certain clarities in their personality around discipline, around goal setting. Um, not always the case, of course, <laughs> um, but it doesn't surprise me that Liam is, you know, first cab off the rank um, to with your um, with your kids to jump straight in there and um, and get stuck into a property. I know Elise, your daughter, also has the same qualities. She's yeah. she's a dancer. Yeah. She's um, you know led led stuff within her own community of friends. Um, so it, <laughs> equally, I'm sure she'll not be far behind Liam. So. Tell us what's Liam done, 18 years old. 18. So he he got his first job at um, after he finished school last year, yep. um, working in hospitality and at the Marriott here on the Gold Coast. Huh. And he just worked and worked and put money away. And then when an opportunity came up with Positive, he yes. turned around to me because he's been watching, you know, the PIRs and everything and watching yep. mentoring. Yep. And um, he goes, I want to get one. And he'd put enough away um, uh, for a good part deposit. of the deposit. We did, yeah. we did give him some, yeah. um, you know, uh, a little bit of help, uh, but he had most of it. And so he's put a deposit down on a four bedroom townhouse um, in Pimpamar as his first home. Wow. And yeah. So that's off the plan and fin yeah. it's ready in December of next year. Um, so he is now madly saving. Um, because he's looking at obviously getting a mortgage at the end of next year. That is phenomenal. Ooh. And there's a couple of things I want to touch on here and what you've said. So um, I'll just clarify for people that aren't part of uh, the PRE community, the mentoring community, PIR is Property Investment Report. Uh, so when anybody's looking at uh, taking on a property opportunity, 
uh, the team have put together an investment report on every single property uh, that comes out here at Positive Real Estate. So Liam's obviously gone through the investment report with yourself with, um, did he have anybody coaching him outside yourselves and Gary? Um, he had Jason. <laughs> the benefit of <laughs> the benefit of being in the inner circle with Dion. Uh, he gets coaching from the top man himself, which is pretty, pretty phenomenal. So he's um he's obviously had a chat with Jason about the Pimpama property and whether that would fit. And um and I noticed you said that you gave your son a bit of help with the deposit. Um yeah. do you want to uh, are you happy to yeah, expand so look, on that a little he, bit? You know, he had yep. most of it. Um yep. You know, we gave him twenty thousand just to top it off, and yep. you know that's what you do. You help your kids, and it 100%. might look like a deposit or something else. And yep. um, but yeah, that's exactly what we did. So we gave oh, that to fantastic. him. And, um, he's uh, yeah, exciting times for him. So yep. living at home, working <laughs> hard, and putting every cent away that he can. Oh, that's great. Right. And you know what I love about this is I think you and I are quite aligned in our values. Yeah. And I've coached at Positive Real Estate for over 16 years. And as you coach a lot of people, you see commonalities. And one of the commonalities is, of course, parents that absolutely, from a very heartfelt place, are super keen to support their children into the property journey. You know, I know there's a lot of concerns out there at the moment around affordability, around this next generation being able to even buy a property or get into a property where that is somewhere that they want to live, you know, particularly in those major capital cities um, and from a lifestyle perspective, Gold Coast, Brisbane, Queensland, you know, that's getting up there now as the, as the market has some challenges around supply, quality supply, I should add. And, um, and one of the things I know is, one of the things I've observed is when children are, or young adults are gifted a full deposit, sometimes you have to have some skin in the game. And what I love with what Deanna and her hubby Gary have done is Liam's gone out there. He's wanted it. He's set a goal. He's got a job, he's saved, he's sacrificed some stuff. He's stayed at home. Um, not that I'm sure that's a sacrifice, do you? But as all of us, <laughs> <as> young, <laughs> if I know you, um, but, if, yeah. you know, as young people, we, we, we want our own space. We want to um, obviously um, be seen as adults. And part of that is I was very keen to leave home. Um, and so I can imagine that, Liam has made a choice in consultation with his parents to stay at home while he saves for this deposit. I love that because he has skin in the game. And so when he, hits, when he hits this goal, it is all the more meaningful because he has strived for it. And when we have a goal where we have to stretch and strive, not only does it make that goal so much sweeter, but it also means we build self-esteem and self-worth having attained something, <clears throat> excuse me, having attained something hard. Um, and so sometimes just something to consider, it's not right for everybody, but something to consider when we have just been given something, it is easier to not value that as much as when we've had to strive for it and participate. Now, I'm the same as you, Dee. I said to my daughter, Amber, save a thousand, I'll give you a thousand. She had yeah. to have skin in the game. In the end, it turned out that she bought it because she didn't want me to have any say in it or anything to do with it. She knows her mother so well. Um, and she went out and purchased her own unit. Um, but she's a lot older than Liam. You know, she's got a good 10 years on top of Liam. And, and she did some other stuff before she purchased. For Liam to get into the market, freaking phenomenal. Congratulations to you and Gary as parents. Congratulations to yeah. Liam for setting some big goals, right? And he set, like, it his first home so he knows he has to live in it for 12 months yep. and then he's already thinking about his next property is that right yeah yeah so he's gone i live in it for 12 months he's lined up some mates to move in with him you know do that and then he wants to turn that into some equity and then go again and then go again so that's he, cool yeah and so is he yeah, he's really set on that 
So is he getting any benefits from like first home buyers grant and all of that kind of stuff? First home buyer grant. Yep. First home buyer grant, that's why he has to go and live in it. So it's not an investment. Yep. Um, so he's going to go and live in that. Yep. Um, it's only, it's quite close to us. So that's handy. And yeah, so he's going to go and live in it for 12 months. We'll see what happens after he's been <laughs> living in it. Um, but he knows, you know, he's preparing himself for mortgage payments. He understands that. So he's making sure he puts away more than what he believes, what we've worked out roughly, what yeah, his mortgage repayments will be. Wonderful. That he so, needs and, you know. Yeah. No? <laughs> Sorry, I cut, I cut you off. <laughs> I think we had a little bit of internet lag or I'm just tired. I've come on yeah. the, off the back of a big event over the last six days and I'm my eyeballs are hanging out of my head. So if I stumble my words, forgive me, folks. <laughs> um, so there's a couple of things once again in here that we need to highlight. Liam has a buffer. Um, so one of the key things that we do with all our clients is any property that they're purchasing, we make sure that they have a buffer so that if anything happens, um, interest rates rise, um, you get sick and you can't work, um, you know, anything out of the ordinary uh, that you have a buffer so that you're not put under pressure to make decisions under pressure that are often not quality decisions. Yeah, we always want at least around two years buffer for folks so that we've got time for whatever the challenge is to settle or to work out a plan in order to um, be able to manage whatever has happened as an issue. Um, so Buffer is awesome. I like that he's got his mates in. So his mates will help him pay the mortgage. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> and there might be, my illusion is, there might be some... Um, some growing for Liam in that space. Um, mates sometimes don't pay cash when they're supposed 100%. to. Hundred <laughs> percent. And so, <laughs> hence, I like he's got a buffer. He's going to have to step up as a bit of a leader within his group, and I'm sure he does already. But um, he might have to have some hard conversations. With, yeah, with it's friends. very different when you know it's yours. Yeah, when it's your and butt it's, on the line. Yeah. So that'll be important for him. And, you know, we've yeah. spoken to him about, you know, all of the insurances that he needs to get. So he's making sure he's got money put aside for those. And, That's you know, because so cool. it's all the things they don't think of. That is so cool. So you'll see Liam grow yeah. as a young man with with responsibilities totally. and step into step into that space. I think that's so cool, yeah. Dee. Well, congratulations to you guys. And I'm super pumped. I don't know about you as a community, but it'll be super pumped. And, oh, well, it won't be 12 months because um, Liam has to settle the property yet. But maybe in 24 months, I'll pop back and um, do an update with Dee and we can follow Liam's journey and see how he goes. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, no, so he's, uh, yeah, he's got his plan. So he's got his goal and his you know vision boards and all those things so Is let's see right? how it all, yeah you know he knows where he wants to go and what he wants to do and he, he's you know making some plans work-wise as well so I think that's super important and I think it a lot of that comes back to that team sport that he played at a high level yeah that's awesome that's awesome and hanging out with Jason and the team too I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> well, and seeing everything <laughs> <laughs> because proximity is massive yeah you are who your top five peers are and um exactly. and once again you know i'll i'll sing it from the rooftops part of the um benefits of being a part of a program like the positive uh mentoring i can't get my words out part of the benefit <laughs> of being part of a community at positive real estate uh because you benefit you know, from the 6,000, 7,000 clients that we have uh, nationwide and across New Zealand that are all doing a similar thing. They're all having lessons. They're all having challenges. They're all having massive wins. Um, and you grow from those challenges and you grow from your community. So um, I think that's absolutely fantastic, Dee. And um, <clears throat> there was one more thing I wanted to um, highlight with Liam's journey and it's gone out of my mind. Well, I think we'll leave it there. So um, thanks, right. Dee, so much for sharing, Liam, and your own journey um, with some property investing Pleasure. stuff. Super, super valuable. And uh, and don't hesitate to reach out, folks, if you didn't realise that your membership included your adult children. It absolutely does if it's a lifetime membership. 
and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. And uh, Dee, thanks once again. Oh, I forgot my my favourite uh, question at the end. If you could oh, give young D any advice, and this reminded me of what I wanted to say too, because the most <laughs> common answer to this question is if I could have started younger. And that's what I love about what Liam's doing, starting investing at 18. Words fail me. He will be he will get such a kick-ass result. So D. Young you, you go back 20, 30, 40 years. What what advice would you give young D? 100% start investing earlier. Um, and if we had the ability to have kept our first house whilst we built the house we're in now, that would have been awesome. Um, but, you know, we can't go back. We can only go forward. Amen. Truer words never spoken. Thank you, Dee. Thank you for thanks, uh, sharing your journey. That was awesome. <laughs> Speak to you soon. Hey, thanks for listening to Property Investor Tales. Remember to subscribe so you get notified every time a new episode drops. As you can guess, I love hearing people's property investor tales. So if you'd like to share yours, then please get in touch with me via email at propertyinvestortales at positivementor.com.au. We would also love your feedback and I would appreciate a five-star review over on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember, you can watch all of these podcasts over on YouTube at Positive Mentor or at positivementor.com.au. Until then, take care, happy investing, and bye for now.